Hey, and welcome to a new video. This is going to be part three of the Ansel Ant-Man API series. And today we're going to take a look at Terraform and how you can use Terraform to manage your private cloud infrastructure with Ansel. So we're going to start out by looking at the Ant-Man dashboard. If you have no idea uh, what the Ant-Man API is, if you that's totally new to you, definitely go back and check out all the other videos. That's going to be very helpful in understanding what we're doing here and also just to give you a quick overview of how Antman works and what you can actually do with it. So today we're going to be looking at how to create, manage, and then also delete Antlets with Terraform. To better understand how to create Antlets, let's just actually take a look at what's involved in doing it with the Antman GUI right now. So it's super easy. You just click on uh, create, you specify the name, the template, the amount of RAM and vCPUs you want to allocate to that antlet, the IP, and then you have the option to select Z pool and compression. So those are the values that we're going to be needing if we want to create um, antlets with Terraform itself. To start off with Terraform, you obviously need to have Terraform installed. I'm not going to cover that part. And you will also need to install the Ansel Terraform provider, which is simply a plugin. So to better understand that and show you what I'm actually talking about, I have two projects on the left side. It's just the Terraform demo project directory. And on the right side, it's the Terraform D directory um, and the plugin directory in particular. So here we should place, or you should place all your Terraform plugins. In my case, I just have the Terraform provider in here and the configuration file. So that Terraform provider is based on the OpenAPI Terraform provider, which you can download um, on our sample project here. There you go. You need to, well, that's not, <laughs> let's look at that. All right, you need to go into the releases and then all you need to do is basically uh, select your version for me, it's going to be Darwin AMD64 since I'm running macOS, but you might as well choose Linux and Windows depending on the operating system you're running. Just download that binary, place it in your uh, plugins directory, and rename it to Terraform Provider Ansel. So, with that covered and with the um, with the plugin installed, let's actually take a look at what we need for our configuration here. So, opening that openapi.yaml file. We can see that I have to find a service, which is called the Ansel service. And in that service, I have to find the Swagger URL, which is the exact URL to my swagger.json definition file. Again, if you don't know what that is, please go back and check out the other two videos because they were talking extensively about the Swagger UI and what you can do with it. You can find that exact path here as well. And I've also specified to skip the uh, SSL validation just in case we're using a, or just in case there might be some issues with the SSL certificate. For me, that's fine here in my local environment, but if you're running that in production, definitely make sure you have a valid SSL certificate and that your SSL certificate is trusted. Okay, but that's really all that's to it. So we can go and quit the configuration here. And now let's actually go and take a look at our real project. So this is just a regular Terraform project, as you might have with any other provider as well. And I've just created one file where I'm actually specifying that I want to use the Ansel provider. So I'm opening that up and you can see that I've defined the provider Ansel with the API key and I've defined the API key up here. So this is what I'll be using for all um, API requests to authenticate myself so that Ansel or my Ansel uh, server actually knows that I am, that I say who I am and that all the um, API requests are authenticated. If you don't know how to get that API token, you can just uh, use the, that post endpoint here, API login, send the username and the password, make sure you do that in an encrypted way and you will get the JWT variable returned. Don't worry about that. That's also explained in very much detail in the earlier videos. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just definitely check those out. Okay, now that I've defined the provider, I can actually define my resources. And a resource here in that, or in my specific case, are gonna be the antlets. So for that, I can take a look at my 
sample project and the antlet1.tf file where I've specified a sample resource and the sample antlet. For this project, let's just create three antlets and actually define them in one file, which is called antlets.tf. So I'm just going to paste that in three times here. And that gives me a very basic structure. Now, if you've been paying attention earlier, you can see that all these variables that I need to specify here is actually what I would have specified in my Antman dashboard as well. So if I go back here, I can see that I have my name, my antlet name. I have the template, the amount of RAM and CPU I'd like to use, the antlet number or the IP address, the Z pool and the compression. So what I need to do is I need to make sure that I have correct values for all of these attributes here and that actually I can create antlets with these values. Otherwise, it's going to create an, or it's going to throw an error later. For example, if I try to use the same antlet number three times, it's going to give me an error and say, hey, that antlet number has already been taken. Or if I try to use a template, it doesn't exist. So in my case, I'm just going to be using the Debian 10.lxe template and I'll be counting up from 10 in the antlet number. Um, for my specific case, compression off is probably just fine. And let's just increment all other values here as well. So we're going to specify Debian 10 here as well. And RAM for now, maybe I'll be using 2 gigabytes instead of 1. Um, that's going to be 248. And maybe 2 CPUs instead of just 1. Uh, also, something very important the RAM value here needs to be specified in megabytes. That might be a bit confusing because when you go back into the Antman dashboard, you actually need to specify it in gigabytes. So you have one gigabyte, two gigabytes. In here, that would be 1024 megabytes or 2048 megabytes. Just as a very quick hint. And the last resource is going to be the Antlet 3. That's also going to be called Antlet 3. It'll be, again, the Debian 10. And here, maybe I'll just use half a gigabyte. In that case, that would just be 512. And we're going to stick with the one eCPU and also increment the IP address. Okay, that so far looks good. I have three different amplets with three different names, three different IP addresses, but they're all going to be using the same template. Of course, that's not necessary. I can use whatever template I have installed. And if I want to know what template I have, I can just check the downloaded templates section right here and use any of, the temp of these templates that I have. Okay, for now let's go back into the antlet section here. Um, quit out of that, save and quit. And now let's initialize our project. So for that I'm going to run terraform init. Oh, I missed an A there. Terraform init. And... Now I have two commands. So the first one is going to be terraform plan, which will check the state of my current antlets and check the state of the antlets on my machine and then compare them. In theory, it'll find that I have three new antlets which do not exist on the um, actual machine. So it'll try to create three, three new antlets. That's basically just a dry run. If I enter my token here and enter, oops, Nope, that's not supposed to happen. I need to actually obtain the token. Let's do that real quick here. So the username is going to be root. The password is going to be Ansel. And there is our token. Okay, so again, if I click Terraform or if I enter Terraform plan, um, it'll do a dry run and actually just tell me exactly what it's about to do without actually doing it. That's very important. So here it correctly recognized that it, I have three antlets, antlet one, two, and three in my infrastructure code, but they do not exist on my Ansel yet. So it's telling me with that plus sign here that it's gonna create three new, changes nothing and destroys nothing. If I'm okay with that, which obviously I am, I can simply run Terraform apply to actually make those changes. So it's again checking and telling me exactly what it's about to do and then I need to confirm with a yes and it'll actually create antlet one, two, and three. 
So that should be very important here now to check if those assets are actually created and if, and, and if everything goes through successfully, which it did. So you can see here it completed everything with ID antlet2, antlet1, antlet3. That's going to be, or that is the name. And at the same time, Antman now shows me the antlet1, antlet2, and antlet3 with the specified resources. So that's all well and good, but how about we now recognize that we may not need the two gigabytes and we just may want to change things a bit. In that case, what I can do is I can go back into my antlet.terraform file and I can change any values that I'd like. So for example, I can make that a 248 and I can make that a 512. And also I could now change the antlet number here to maybe 14. All right, once I've applied those changes, I'm gonna try and run Terraform plan first so that it actually shows me what it's about to do. And hopefully it'll recognize all the changes that I made here locally and then tells me that it's supposed to do those on the actual Ansel as well. Okay, so you can see that sign here and it's showing me exactly what it's about to change. So I'm changing the first antlet from 1024 to 248 megabytes of RAM, changing the second from 248 to 512, and I'm changing the number here from 11 to 14. And the third isn't going to be affected at all. So that's just ZFS info that's dynamically created. We don't have to worry about that. Okay, again, I'm going to run Terraform apply with my token. It's going to check real quick what it's about to do again. I can now confirm that it's actually doing what I intended it to do and agree with a yes. Hopefully that'll go all through well. It's now basically just contacting the Antman API with a put request and update each antlet. And it went through successfully. And now you can see almost instantly it changed everything here in the Antman dashboard. So I now have two antlets with 512 megabytes of RAM. Might be a bit ridiculous that it still has two CPU cores, but for just demonstration purposes, that's okay. And the first antlet now actually has two gigabytes of RAM. The IP changed to 14 as well, so everything is exactly as I wanted it to be. So now, how about actually getting rid of those antlets? So for example, um, the antlet 3 is no longer needed, and I just want to get rid of that. All I need to do is update my code accordingly, and then, you guessed it, run Terraform. We're just going to skip uh, plan for now run Terraform apply, it's then going to run through run through the changes. And you can see with a minus sign here, it's destroying the Ampa 3. You also have a very quick summary on the bottom. So there is nothing new to add. There are two to change because the ZFS uh, info changed, but that's nothing to worry about. That'll not affect the actual Ampa itself and there's one to destroy. Now, if I'm absolutely sure that I want to destroy that, I can type in yes, and it'll perform a delete request to uh, the Ansel, and the Ansel will then delete Antler 3. And that's it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed, uh, enjoyed this video, learned something. If you did, I'd be happy if you left a like, and if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments, and. I'll see you at the next video. Bye, guys.